up, y'all? I say it. What's up, y'all? Look at me when I'm talking to you, bro. Nah, I'm just messing with y'all, man. This your boy, Knockout Boxing 86 TV, and we in here. So check this out, bro. Before we get going on our video, smash that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you're new here. Share the video. Turn on your notifications. And go follow me on Twitter, at KOBoxing86TV. If you got a breakdown or a prediction you want me to do for you, knockoutboxing 86 at yahoo.com is the email address. Um, and don't forget about our live shows, man. We live every Wednesday night, 7.30 p.m. Central Time. Live every Thursday night, 7.30 p.m. Central Time. You can also catch me live every Sunday morning with the singing OG KQKC Boxing Network. Sunday mornings, 9 a.m. Central Standard Time. But let's get it popping. Let's get into our video. And today, bro, Tank Davis got exposed last night. Yup, yup. You're damned if you do, damned if you don't. And I told y'all this was ha would happen, bro. That's why I told y'all I didn't like the Roly fight. I didn't like the fight with Roly off the strength of since Tank Davis was supposed to win, since he was in the position. Y'all give me a minute. I got my dog. I'm trying to get him to walk. He think it's hot out here, but he needs his exercise. Just give me a minute. Let him off the leash and he'll walk. All right, we back. Um, he was in a he was in a damned if he do, damned if he don't situation with Tank Davis because since they made the fight with Roly, bro, the thing is, if he knock him out in round one, right, or if Roly is somewhat competitive and he knock him out in the middle of the fight, or Lord forbid, Roly go the distance or Roly beat him or whatever the case may be, bro, it was going to be people that was going to say this, right? They was going to say he was exposed. They was going to say he ain't fought nobody and, and things of that nature. For me, I agree with him being exposed. I really do. I agree with him being exposed as a very versatile and a great fighter. That's what I agree with. That's what he was exposed as last night. Because Tank Davis is showing you that he can be too much. You can look at what he just did with, with Roland Romero. You got a fighter that's physically bigger than him, physically stronger than him, awkward as shit. And what does he do? He fights him off the back foot, walks him into a counter shot, one punch knockout, highlight reel, had Roly biting the ropes and shit. You feel what I'm saying? Then you look at what he did against um, Isak Pitbull Cruz, small, diminu diminutive fighter. I can't say that word. Small, short, stocky fighter. Um, coming forward relentlessly. What does he do in that fight? Walks, uh, walks him into counter shots, outboxes him using lateral movement in the ring. Outboxing uh, Isak Pitbull Cruz. You go to his fight with Leo Santa Cruz, tall, long, volume puncher. They really don't have power like that. Walk him down because he ain't respect the power and shit. So this young man is showing us as boxing fans that he can beat you multiple ways. Give me another second. Hold on, stay. Stay. Let me put this back on you. Stay. Alright, Bubba, let's go. Alright, so what does he do with um what is he? He's showing you that he can beat you multiple ways, bro. Ain't nobody else just knocking out dudes in multiple ways off the back foot, off the front foot, one punch knockout. You know what I'm saying? If you want to go to go to war with me in the trenches and you want to have an inside fight, I can wear you down to the body, eventually stopping you like he did Jose Pedraza. He's winning in a multitude of different ways against various opponents, bro. Back foot fighting, front foot fighting. Fighting on the inside. Whatever you want to do, he's doing it, bro. He's doing it. And so, the crit, like, that's why I didn't want this fight, man. I told y'all, bro, what was going to happen. And I'm not giving him credit for Roley. He went in there. He did exactly what I expected to do down to the round. I told y'all he knocked that man out in sixth round. That's exactly what he did. So, I'm not giving him major props, but to hate on him and talk about he got exposed... All he did was show me that he is who I thought he is, and this is exactly what I think about Tank Davis. If you at 135, or you at 130, you got to be perfect. You got to be perfect to beat that young man. And I would argue, I would argue, and I think I, I, I'll take this debate with anyone, that he would have an easier time with some of the guys that you think are better fighters than Roly. Just my opinion, and let me explain it. With Roley being awkward and being unconventional, that's some shit that you can't really prepare for. That's some shit that 
you ain't never really seen because don't nobody really fight like Rowley down there in them weight classes. Ain't no awkward ass fighter like that. You know what I'm saying? Rowley's not as good as Emmanuel Navarrete, but very sim similar in terms of being hard to prepare for because they just do shit that boxers don't do. For Rowley, loading up on every shot, wide ass stance, putting his hands in positions where they don't belong sometimes. Come here. Come here, we're getting in the car, man. Where you going? Putting his hands in positions that they don't belong sometimes, right? Um, always, you know, very, very aggressive. Maybe when he shouldn't be aggressive. Just a lot of things that you don't see boxers do. Get in the car. That you don't see boxers do. And so for that reason, you know, he hard to prepare for. I would argue that you put Tank in there with a conventional fighter, someone who boxes the way that you're taught to box, then he's used to that and he's much more comfortable he's much better at um being able to time them because they're going to make movements they're going to do things that he's used to seeing right so i maintain this bro be quiet man i maintain this if you can't hurt tank davis it's only a matter of time for you bro straight up and down because the people that they will argue about, you know what I'm saying, to tell me that it should be favored over Tank. People say they will favor Devin over Tank. That's cool. I think Devin, Devin Haney is a is an outstanding boxer. I think that he does a lot of things very well in that ring. But what you can't get off, what you can't get me to remove my eyes from is I saw Jojo Diaz be able to have very competitive moments and hit Devin Haney consistently. And Jojo Diaz isn't as fast or explosive or skilled or powerful um, as Tank is. And so if Jojo Diaz is able to hit Devin Haney, why won't Tank Davis be able to? And again, until you show me the fighter that's taller than Tank that takes his shots, because keep in mind, the guy he ain't knocked out in his last like 20 fights was Isak Cruz, and Isak Cruz was shorter than him. You show me a guy where Tank is able to punch up at them and throw shots that he's used to throwing, looping shots, you know, shooting that left hand up, shooting that uppercut up. You show me a guy that's taking that shot, those types of shots from him, then okay, bro, you have to show me. You understand what I'm saying? But until that happens, I feel like it's only a matter of time with Devin Haney. I don't think he can take Tank's work, and I don't think he's he's that skilled to where Tank just ain't going to be able to hit him. Like, let's just keep it a buck, bro. Like, all these dudes that we seeing that people think, like Shakur Stevenson is another one, right? Like, all of these dudes, bro, they ain't Floyd, fam. And even Floyd got hit. Like, again, with Shakur, like, I think Oscar Valdez might have caught him with three or four right hands. But Tank Davis is more explosive, stronger, bigger. And again, Shakur and Devin will fight Tank in a way that he's used to seeing. They will fight him as boxers, not be awkward, not be, oh, uh, you know what I'm saying, doing a bunch of unconventional shit. Meaning it's shit that he's seen before. It's shit that will make it easier for him to fight those type of guys. And then the main thing is they not physically strong and powerful and shit to be pushing him back, having him fight off the back foot and doing shit to make him uncomfortable. Like, I don't, like, bro, I ain't saying he beat all these dudes, but to act like they can just watch him or he shouldn't be the favorite against these guys that we want to see him fight, bro, I just, I don't see it. I saw nothing last night to make me any less confident in Javante Tank Davis as a fighter when it pertains to him against the absolute best that the division has to offer. Now, we're going to drop another video about our disappointment because he did say, as he was leaving his post-fight press conference yesterday, um, he did say something about staying with Mayweather Promotions. Y'all know why I stand with that shit. I don't like it. I don't want it. Um, I think that there's much better uh, fights for him, to be perfectly honest with y'all. But um, at the end of the day, man, or much better moves, I should say, not much better fights, much better moves for him to make, to be 100% honest with y'all. But at the end of the day, man, um, I'll stand corrected if Floyd Mayweather and Leonard Ellaby and Espinosa, if they go get him the fights that I want to see him in, then I have no, I have no, I have no beef. I have no beef. But if they continue to move him like they've been moving him in recent years, then shit, I'm going, I'm going, I'm going to have beef with it. I'm going to have criticism for it. That don't make me any less of a fan because I want to see you in there with the absolute best. But um, this notion that Tank somehow got exposed, in my opinion, y'all, I think that shit is false. Unless you're saying he got exposed as a versatile, great boxer that can change the fight at any moment, bro.
And any he could take a competitive fight and make you forget that shit was competitive. Real talk. I had him up three rounds to two at the time of the stoppage, and this is par for the course. Tank, you know, figuring you out, starting slow. And then, to me, what I'm learning and what I think, I think the fight for Tank Davis really don't start to about round five, if you want to keep it a buck. Like, middle of round four, round five, that's when, that's when shit start to get real. And if he start catching you before that, then you really in trouble. But, but round four, round five, bro, he start turning up on dudes. And that's exactly what he did on Roley last night, bro. He was turning up on him. Go look at him. He caught him. He caught him with multiple left hands before that. That had Roley like popping his head, popping all the way back and stopping Roley in his tracks, bro. He 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 started doing that before he knocked him out. And then when he caught him with that with, with that one that made Roley bite the ropes and fall through the ropes and shit, bro. Like that's some different type of shit. Until somebody go show that they can take that man power, bro. At 135, it's hard to pick anybody against him. But that's what we want to see. You know what I'm saying? That's what I'm here for. But um, shout out to um, everybody that's tuning into the channel, man. The channel's growing great. I appreciate you guys. Be sure to um, smash the like on this video. Check out our live shows every Wednesday and Thursday night at 7.30 p.m. Central Time. Um, and then Sunday morning with the Singing OG KQKC Boxing Network. I appreciate everybody watching this video. Y'all go enjoy the rest of y'all day, man. It's a beautiful day here in Dallas, Texas. So, you know. We're about to go get it in with the family, man. So y'all go do the same with the ones that you love. I appreciate y'all watching the video. Enjoy the rest of your day. And with that, we out of here. Peace, y'all.